Every year on the 4th of July, I like to go back through some of the foundational documents to remind myself of not only what the revolution was about, but the kind of world, the kind of nation that it was trying to bring about. I look back through the Federalist Papers, the Declaration of Independence, the preamble to the Constitution, but inevitably, no matter where I roam, I always come back to this little piece. 272 words that President Lincoln gave when he was helping to dedicate a new cemetery that had only a short while previously been a battlefield during the Civil War. This was in 1863, still well before the conclusion of that conflict. But I always come back to it because it talks about America, the experiment, as one which might not continue, but which given the principles upon which it was made, though imperfectly it has been able to embody them, still deserves to continue on, still deserves to be a beacon that indeed those ideals can be reached, that they deserve to be reached, and that we, the living, have a duty, I would almost say, to ensure that we are working towards the fulfillment of those ideals. And so I'm going to read that short speech to you because though I've tried for many years to memorize it, I just never quite have the time for I always get lost in thinking about the meaning of this particular oration. And I'm also going to point out that yes, there are definitely people today who are learning that President Lincoln was not a paragon of virtue. He was very much a dictator in his time. And on top of that, even for his day, his views on black people living in the United States were in no way, shape, or form progressive, at least for a good portion of his life. And yet he still gave us these words. And I think, given their power and their message, that they still have a good amount of resonance today. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on the great battlefield of that war. We have come to dig it, dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives, that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far more, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to, uh, to the unfinished work, which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. And now as we're living in a time of great division between right and the left, face masks and 
those who refuse to wear them, those who have and those who have not, and those who believe that movements have been fulfilled and those who believe they've been left behind. I entreat you all to take just a moment today and think instead about what brings us together. This little experiment, which is still six years shy of being 250 years old, yet which for 250 years almost, has said that it is dedicated to certain propositions and chiefly among those is freedom. And that while it has failed in many regards to achieve those ends, it has nonetheless grown and changed to better try to reach those. Indeed, probably an impossibility, but a dream that I guarantee I will personally strive for nonetheless. Happy 4th of July, my friends. May we commemorate this day where we remember our first revolution as we are sitting through what looks like it's going to be another. But may it be one that brings us to a greater unity and a greater endeavor towards reaching those hallowed goals.